Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Ninjago video here on the channel. My name is Tanner Fishies. In today's video, we are going to be discussing some notes about Ninjago's progression and its early concepts brought to us by Ninjago illustrator Mike Rayhawk over on Twitter. They recently put up a full article talking about their experience working at Lego and the process of making Ninjago and some of the more rocky examples of Lego not really being great to certain aspects of Ninjago more on that here in a second. Now this was revealed a couple of weeks ago. I have not had a chance to talk about it just yet because of all the Dragons Rising Season 2 craziness, but now we are finally here discussing this article. Let's head on over to the article and check it out. And here we have the whole website. I will link it down below in the description just in case you wanted to read the entire thing at your own time. Uh, I will simply just be skimming through the article. I've already read the entire thing front to back, but I do have a few specific things that I would like to highlight for today's video. First of all, the 2004 concept Ninja Ghosts. This sounds eerily similar to what Ninjago would end up being. Just look at this. Dragon ninjas and skeleton soldiers fighting for control of mythical golden weapons. Even more so, a remote monastery with a wise master working to stop a sorcerer and an army escaped from the underworld. Gee, I wonder what that sounds like. Couldn't possibly be Ninjago. No. And, uh, you know, they mention here as well, Ninja Ghosts, Ninja Go, Ninjago. It all kind of connects. But here we have an early concept from 2004 of what Ninja Ghosts would look like. So we have the skeleton base right here, some golden weapons up top, the ninja base in the background, obviously. And these designs down here look very similar to uh, the 90s ninja theme as opposed to what Ninjago would eventually become. But of course, the resemblance is not hard to notice there. Um, even more so, we have some other sketches for ninja ghosts and whatnot. So very cool stuff here. Like I said, I'm not going to read the entire thing, but if you want to check it out, uh, by yourself. It is a worthwhile read by all means. We also learn about uh, some other concepts that never made it to the final stages of production. Here we have some interesting stuff though. This is I guess an early concept for what Garmadon might have looked like uh, in uh, this Ninja Ghosts theme. Apparently Garmadon was going to be some type of sorceress at first. Uh, we have a couple of designs here. I think they also mention yeah a, a Rita Repulsa like uh, dragon sorceress from the underworld interesting um yeah i i kind of like these these concepts though i feel like an evil sorceress character i mean we've seen something like that in ninjago before right but something like this would have been interesting to see as the first villain for ninjago uh just going down a little bit more we have some other sketches here uh these ones are for uh, other Lego themes, other ideas that never made it off the ground, but needless to say, other things that had an influence on Ninjago, like take a look at this floating temple back there, this floating pirate ship back here. A lot of this is reminiscent of things that we would eventually see in Ninjago. And then we get down to Lego Agency 2012 to 2019, when Ninjago was very much alive and kicking. Uh, there are a couple of things here to note. First of all, we have some amazing artwork here of Garmadon, as well as, uh, a couple of other tournament pieces. We also have some rough sketches for Skybound. And again, Skybound is also something that was inspired from an earlier concept. Uh, July 2004 concept, Sky Pirates. Hmm. <laughs> Seems like a lot of that made its way into Ninjago as well. Look at some of these designs for the floating pirate ships. Again, we looked at these earlier or something similar, but this is more so what Skybound's identity was. Look at how similar the Misfortune's Keep looks to some of these concept sketches from 2004, mind you. What was that, 12 years before Skybound actually came out? Uh, I really like this concept right here. Some alternate designs for not only the gin blades, but also for some of the packaging for Skybound itself. Uh, Jay with fire and his eye patch, and also mentioned here in the article, uh, there was going to be a different storyline involving Jay's eye patch. Uh, let's see. In early versions of the story, Jay was injured in a fire, forcing him to wear an eye patch, making everyone suspect he was in league with the new air pirate antagonists. Uh, so interesting. Jay was going to be hurt in a fire at first and that's why he would have his eye patch i'll probably do a separate video about that eventually because that is an interesting concept that i would like to explore more uh but anyway the storyline was abandoned for a bunch of reasons uh apparently jay on fire would cause a bunch of confusion with kai not sure how that would cause confusion but sure whatever works uh we also have some stuff about the woo crew 
um, you know, all of that stuff, where the Wu crew came from, what exactly it was trying to be. And here we get to one of the more interesting aspects of this article, the whole thing with Nia and Lego basically refusing to give Nia a spotlight simply because she was a female character. Um, by the way, shout out to Kathy. <laughs> Cameo appearance here. This is an awesome piece as well. Uh, but anyway, going into the, uh, the blatant sexism by Lego, uh, let's talk about this here. So let's just read this. Um, let's see. In all my years in agency, my biggest victory wasn't the movie building or the woo crewing. It was teaming up with Leanne to strong arm Lego into giving Nia the box cover spotlight. That was a fight. Legos was steadfastly opposed to ever spotlighting a girl on a Ninjago box. Yeah, because God forbid we have a girl on the Ninjago packaging, right, Lego? <laughs> it wasn't a total victory. In the end, they only allowed it if she shared the corner spotlight with Kai. So that would eventually lead to Hands of Time, where Kai and Nia shared the box art together. I guess it was going to be Nia solo at first. But again, at that time, Lego was super against having Nia on the box by herself. The only way that they could allow it is if Kai was there with her. Not a great look, Lego. Not a great look at all there. Um... Let's see. To be fair, this was presented as a retailer issue. Uh, the prevailing wisdom was that retailers would refuse to stock any toy that wasn't 100% boy or girl coded for their boy and girl toy aisles. Our argument was that Ninjago was enough of a cultural and commercial powerhouse in 2017 that we not only had the ability to push back against that status quo, but also the obligation to take a leadership role in doing so. Y yeah, at that time, Ninjago pretty much identified itself as something where, you know, anything would sell, right? Ninjago lasted until 2017, and even beyond that, it's still going today for a very specific reason. Ninjago sells, regardless of who you put on the box, Lego. And if you thought it couldn't get any worse, shortly afterwards, one of the senior VPs emailed out a new policy that Lego employees weren't allowed to have public opinions about gender representation in Lego anymore. And a year later, they laid off most of the North American agency entirely. Oof. Uh, yeah, not a great, not a great look either. Nia finally got her box highlight in 2021's Ninjago Seabound. Too late for those of us who fought to get her there, but I like to think our efforts helped push the needle to make it possible. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it sounds like they fought really hard to get Nia at least to have some type of highlight, right? And I think it is obviously extremely stupid that, oh, we can't give Nia highlights because she's a girl. It sounded like at some points here, Lego did not know their own audience. Um, but anyway, in 2021, one, yep, Ninjago Seabound came out, Nia was the focus, and surprise, surprise, Lego, the entire Ninjago series did not crash and burn. Who would have thought? Uh, but anywho, we actually have some other concepts here as well, including some sketches for Master of the Mountain, which, you know, this piece looks amazing, by the way. And then we move on to some Dragons Rising concepts. Now, we've talked about these in previous videos. Uh, these concepts were revealed uh, a little while ago. So these were done up in 2020 to 2021. Somewhere in that range, uh, we have an early concept for Aaron and Ryu back when he was still called Max, Streetwise and Slick, hence the design. And like I said previously talking about these uh, these early concepts, for Aaron specifically, I can tell a lot of that came from, uh, or eventually made its way into uh, Nelson for Ninjago Crystallized. Here we have an early version of Sora, back when she was uh, maybe a formling, and <laughs> definitely not human. Um, yep, Sora was originally a non-human character. A couple of other concepts for Dragon's Rising stuff. This is, of course, an early design for Lord Rass. He would have been a big fig. Uh, very interesting look, as I've mentioned. A couple of other designs for Rass, and here we have Raptin, uh, Raptin the Dragon Hunter, and a captured dragon itself here. Kind of like this design, very Chima-esque as well. Uh, yep, yeah, chained dragon concept from 2020. But overall, guys, that'll pretty much wrap it up for uh, this article right here. Again, from Mike Rayhawk, an artist and... Uh, an illustrator working at Lego, and like I said, I will be linking this down below in the description. It's totally worth the full read. I just wanted to highlight a couple of key things about this article that surprised me and a couple of things that should probably be discussed. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Again, link in the description for this article. In some cases, it does sound like a pretty rocky process, especially with some of the, uh, the, the blatant sexism. 
Um, but regardless, link in the description. Check out this article if you so desire. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. That'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here. If you guys enjoyed this one, feel free to like and subscribe. Do all that fun stuff, and I will talk to you guys again very, very soon. Peace.